Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's look at the performance, actual performance figure of the Exynos 1280 SoC because we are now seeing that uh, actually in a lot of uh, smartphones with Samsung. In fact, as you can see, I have a bunch of smartphones here in the mid-range uh, category. So we'll be evaluating where does this Exynos 1280 falls because we know uh, this is the new mid-range, what do you say, chipset from Samsung and Samsung generally tries to put this chipset, whatever new chipset they release in the mid range in a lot of smartphones in fact we have already seen that it was launched with the galaxy a53 uh, then it also came with this m33 galaxy m33 uh, it also came with the a33 also and i'm pretty sure it'll gonna come in a lot more uh, what do you say mid range smartphones from samsung so let's look at this one where does it exactly fall in the mid range uh, smartphone uh, market so let's start with this and as you can see i have a bunch of smartphones and uh, this is the base uh, one this is the moto uh, g31 this comes with the uh, helio uh, g85 soc this is for about 13 14 000 or something like that then uh, this is the new uh, and again this is also a new uh, chipset uh, now we are seeing this one this is the having the snapdragon 680 this is the realme 9 4g but uh, we are seeing this snapdragon 680 in a lot of mid-range uh, smartphones that are being launching in fact motorola also globally launched a smartphone with the snapdragon 680 so i i expect that the 680 we'll see a lot in a lot of mid-range smartphones this is also important so we'll look at it and then of course we have this uh, what do you say m uh, third, um, uh, 33 uh, this is uh, having the Exynos 1280 and then we have the Motorola G71 this came with the Snapdragon 695 SoC which was an interesting one so we'll look at it and then I actually don't have the uh, what do you say M52 uh, that came last year with the Snapdragon 778 but I feel this Realme 9 uh, Pro plus uh, that comes with the Diamond City 920 is closer to the Snapdragon 778 so we'll look at the uh, figures also so let's start and uh, let's start with actually uh, the base this is the uh, what do you say Moto G31 with the Helio G85 uh, and I'm going to show you two uh, what do you say benchmark so that we have an idea I act actually ran a lot of things but the video will be too long but this should give you an idea where this chipset uh, fall into and if I go to screenshots okay let's start with the uh, what do you say the Geekbench score and as you can see we got a Geekbench single core score of 343 and multi core 1287 nothing great nothing bad also for the price and and to do score we got 1,99,000 just below 2 lakhs so this is interesting uh, this is the uh, G85 now let's look at this new Realme uh, 9 4G that was just announced recently launched and let's look at the scores and let's just go through the benchmark scores. Yeah, didn't I save it? Ah, okay, here I saved it. And as you can see, Geekbench score, single core, we got a 382, uh, which is not a big difference compared to this one. That was a surprising thing. But multi-core, obviously, it got a better score. And if we go to the Antutu score, uh, we got a score of 2,86,000 on uh, this one. Now, let's uh, uh, move to this Exynos uh, 1280. This is the new chipset from Samsung. And uh, the good thing is it's based on fine nanometer process. There are some good things about this, but there are also some things that I did not like. I'll talk about that in the uh, later in the conclusion of the video so let's first look at the same stuff and let's go to the gallery and geekbench as you can see uh, i was impressed with the single core uh, as you can see 733 whereas all these others got a significant less for a single core and single core operation score is very very important guys uh, so it's doing a pretty good job and multi-core also and if i talk about the and to two score here i was very very surprised because it got a score of four lakh ten thousand which is actually i was not expecting to be very frank to get at this kind of a score now let's talk about uh, this one the moto g71 uh, which was a pretty popular i think so this was selling for about nineteen thousand. this one the um, this uh, samsung is for eighteen thousand uh, but this doesn't have an amulet screen this has an amulet screen and let me just quickly just go to the gallery and uh, show you the same thing library and uh, again okay, screenshots i didn't uh, save the what do you say geekbench uh, no yeah i did i did sorry 
points over here. And again, as you can see, this got a single score of 611, pretty decent, but still falls short of what Samsung was getting. So looks like in single core, this will go ahead. And multi-core also, surprisingly, the Exynos 1280 is uh, still beating uh, this uh, G71 that comes with the Snapdragon 695. So that was surprising to me. Let's look at the Antutu score and still uh, this uh, uh, Exynos 1280 is beating even in the Antutu 2. Now let's talk about, uh, I don't have the Samsung Galaxy uh, M52. Uh, so what I did is I took the, as you can see the screenshot, this is from 91 mobiles. And according to them, the benchmark score is about 5,9,000. So yes, significantly higher than this one. Uh, this is the Realme 9, uh, uh, Pro Plus and uh, this comes with the MediaTek 920 SoC which generally we are seeing in upper premium uh, end uh, smartphones from 25 to 30,000. So let's look at the scores of this one also and uh, first let's look at uh, and uh, immediately I think so uh, this got the best single uh, uh, what do you say score let me adjust the brightness a little bit yeah and uh, single core as you can see this got the best yes. 808 and multi-core also this obviously got better than all of them and in fact uh, this i would say is closer to the snapdragon 778 778 in fact is slightly even better than this one but if you look at the android score again as you can see this got a very respectable score of 5 lakh 7000 which is actually very close to the snapdragon 778 so what can we conclude yes this exynos 1280 is competing this is actually in a different price segment. Generally, these smartphones with this Diamond City 920 are about 25 to 30,000. So if we talk about many of the mid-range smartphones, uh, yes, this Exynos 1280 is performing actually pretty well, as you can see with the scores. Uh, but um, again, Samsung is also trying to put this uh, Exynos 1280 in uh, smartphones that came last year with the Snapdragon 778. And frankly speaking, the Snapdragon 778 is a way more powerful chipset than this Exynos 1280. That will give a score of about 5 lakh 10,000, almost a 1 lakh difference. Uh, so uh, I don't like, uh, yes, this is uh, actually for mid-range smartphones. If you look at it, uh, the, this is the Moto uh, G71, that's this one, 19,000. Uh, this is the uh, Realme, uh, what is that, 9 4G. This is for 18,000, same cost. Yes, you're getting significantly faster processor. Uh, but again, it simply cannot compete with the likes of the Snapdragon 778. So yes, what can we conclude? It's actually a pretty decent uh, chipset. In fact, much better than I uh, what I expected. And uh, if you're getting a smartphone uh, in the mid-range price uh, band, 20, uh, 20 uh, uh, around 20-ish, I feel this is actually outperforming many of the other, in fact, far better and faster than the Snapdragon 680 that I'm seeing in a lot of mid-range smartphones right now. Uh, coming to the good things that I like with this processor because I've played with this one a little bit. As it's based on 5 nanometer process, the battery life I'm, uh, that I'm getting on this one is actually really, really good. This does not heat up that much compared to some of the earlier Exynos uh, uh, chipsets that we have seen. And also the battery life is very good because it's based on 5 nanometer process. But in one area, I would say, it is uh, performing not as well as I expected as in gaming. Don't get me wrong. It's not like that. We cannot do gaming with the Exynos uh, 1280. You can do it. But uh, you, uh, I would say the best gaming you would get in somewhere in the medium uh, settings. If you try to push it towards the higher graphic settings or something that like that, no. Uh, it does not work and you will see some frame drops. So uh, this was the analysis of the Exynos 1280 uh, SOC. I wanted to make a different kind of a video because I'm pretty sure Samsung has already launched three smartphones with this Exynos 1280. And this year, they're going to launch a lot of smartphones with this one. And I simply cannot review and test everyone. So this should give you a ballpark figure, at least in terms of the CPU performance, where the Exynos 1280, uh, what do you say, smartphones fall compared to many of the other popular mid-range smartphones with different chipset. If you like this video, do let me know. I'll try to do this for other popular chipsets also. Anyways, guys, if you're still not subscribed to this YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. This is Ranjit, and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.